We'll begin with members' statements. The member for Chatham Kent Leamington. Good morning, Speaker. Erling Klinger is a leading automotive manufacturing company providing innovative, innovative solutions to industry since 1879. With its headquarters in Germany, the company has expanded its operations all over the world and established itself as a reliable and trusted brand in the mobility industry. My community of Leamington is proud to serve as their flagship and only Canadian-based operation. Founded back in 2000, it has expanded several times to cover over 147,000 square feet of state-of-the-art manufacturing space and employing over 170 local employees. The Leamington facility recently was approved for provincial grant funding of up to $1,500,000 of eligible costs and a total investment of $58 million. This facility manufactures cam cover modules, cockpit cross-car beams, and oil separation modules. They also produce fuel cell systems and lithium-ion battery systems while conducting substantial R&D. Recently, this company made international headlines with their recent announcement of another expansion. The expansion is a testament to the company's commitment to its strategically located operations in Leamington and the company's firm belief that Ontario is the best jurisdiction in the world to do business in. We want to celebrate and thank Erling Klinger for their commitment to Leamington, to Ontario, and to jobs of the future. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for London North Centre. Speaker, later this afternoon, I'm pleased this House will debate my motion calling on the province to establish a new public agency to finance and build at least 250,000 new affordable and non-market rental homes at cost on public land. Yes. There will be plenty of time to debate the merits of that motion, but this morning I would like to share with my colleagues why this kind of housing matters. I ask you all to think for a moment about the many benefits that, a good, that good housing brings us as individuals, as families, and as communities, not just in terms of keeping us dry and warm, but also in providing a safe, stable place to raise our families and a sense of mental, physical, and financial stability that cannot be understated. The impact goes beyond just housing. Stable housing changes everything. When people have stable housing, they can raise a family, they can retire, they can have something to leave behind. Secure housing impacts families for generations. A good place to call home is a source of dignity with benefits that radiate to a family, a community, to an incredible province like Ontario in a great country like ours. I hope you will vote yes to bring dignity, security, and affordable good housing to the families of Ontario. Do Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today, in all honesty, to brag about the amazing folks, the community members in my riding of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. I recently had the opportunity to join in a wonderful celebration. The Lennox and Addington County General Hospital has had a volunteer service that has been active for 60 years now. The general public may not realize it, but these volunteers provide an amazing addition to our health care services. While these people might not put a cast on your arm or deliver a baby, they do provide an added level of care and comfort for the people at the hospital. For six decades, they've been helping people find their way around the hospital. They've been providing a coffee or a quick bite to eat in the cafe and making get well cards and small gifts available for the visitors. Myself, along with the hospital CEO and hospital board chair, had the chance to tell these volunteers just how grateful we are for what they bring to our local health care. And in celebration of that 60 years of service, the organization donated another $60,000 to the hospital foundation. And that's on top of the millions that they've raised over that 60 years. My thanks go to all of the volunteers, the members of that organization, and to their president, Marcus Bester, for inviting me to join in that celebration. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Kiwetma. Yeah, miigwech, Speaker. I'm in the uh, Cat Lake uh, is one of the 31 First Nations in Kiwetnung. In December 2022, 
Catholic First Nation sent a letter to the Ministry of Northern Development and uh, the Ministry of Mines about mining activity in their territory. Cod Lake has a full moratorium on mining activity on their tidal lands. The moratorium means no permits, exploration permits, winter roads, and no drilling on the lands and the waters until their Anishinaabe lead uh, assessment is done. Whatever consultation that was attempted with Cod Lake First Nation was inadequate. With COVID and severe addiction issues happening uh, that take immediate priority, there is little time for mining. The plan for the proposed mine includes uh, draining a crystal clear lake full of lake trout, Speaker. Um, this uh, lake trout is rare. These lakes are rare. Only one, about 1% 1 of the Ontario's lakes contain lake trout. These waters and fish are very important to the ways of life and what happens there and should be, should be decided through an Anishinaabe-led assessment of the project. Speaker, it is the will of the Cat Lake people that they will decide whether to consent or not to mining. They are fully considering their options and next steps. Their process must be respected. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning. I, uh, I want to rise today to highlight the great work of Scooty, a uh, micromobility company based out of Brampton, uh, and dare I say it, a made in Brampton success story. Founded in 2019 by a group of immigrants dedicated to improving mobility, Scooty has quickly grown to complement Brampton's existing transit options, including an exclusive agreement with Metrolinx to deploy their e-scooters at all GO stations in Brampton. Speaker, this would not be possible without the hard work of the Scooty team. Let's give it up for Shweb Ahmed, Yashin Shah, Moaz Ahmed, Wasif Khan, and Shahid Pasha, uh, and their, their team of fantastic employees. I saw their dedication firsthand at their facility in Brampton this summer, where the team ensures that their scooters are maintained and delivered to neighbourhoods all across the city. Speaker, with a $1 million investment through the Ontario Vehicle Innovation Network for Scooty, our government is committed to ensuring that innovators have the tools that they need to succeed and develop Made in Ontario transit solutions. The magic isn't just in their scooters, but also in their software that allows them to compete on an international scale. This is an example of great Brampton minds creating a true Brampton success story and helping to elevate us to a truly global city. And I can guarantee you, Speaker, if we put the great minds behind Brampton businesses up against any other city, pound for pound, Brampton will get it done. The team at Scooty's getting it done. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa West, Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. This past Saturday, I joined tenants of Acora Village in Bayshore who have received notice of a 5.5% rent increase, despite the fact that their landlord has neglected tenants' requests for maintenance and repairs for years. These tenants were speaking out in defense of their rights against a corporate landlord all too happy to jack up the rates, but not willing to respect the most basic tenant rights. Sadly, Speaker, their stories were all too familiar to me. I have been hearing many stories like this from tenants across Ottawa West Nepean. Tenants in the Voyageur apartments, where Paramount served residents with eviction notices despite having failed to provide 60 days notice of rent increases. Tenants in a CLV apartment, where the landlord has ignored safety concerns from tenants but has been all too happy to raise the rent, with the rate for one apartment going from $1,400 to $1,900 to $2,600 in the space of just six months. God. Tenants in the Duchess, a homestead building, which is brand new, not subject to rent control, where tenants are getting served with rental increases while being unable to get significant and dangerous maintenance and repair concerns addressed. These landlords are feeling empowered to do whatever they want thanks to this government killing rent control and destroying the landlord-tenant board. It's time for the government to respect the right of all Ontarians to an affordable, properly maintained place to live. Reinstate real rent control, crack down on rent evictions, and fix the landlord tenant board. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Markham Unionville. Remarkable non profit organizations in Markham Unionville that enrich our community. Founded in 1919, the Unionville Curling Club embodies more than just a sport. 
is where friendship flourishes and a strong sense of community is nurtured. Thanks to a recent generous grant from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, the club will be able to upgrade their facilities and equipment, and they will continue to thrive as a hub of caring passion and community spirit. The Unionville Community Centre, another vital non-profit in my riding, serves as a vital community connector. The centre offers diverse programs that promote seniors' well-being, fitness and social engagement. With funding support from our government, they have extended their reach through virtual programming to meet our seniors' evolving needs. Their work ensures our seniors stay active, healthy and connect. There is also our cherished Markham Museum that embraces the past and the present. It preserves Markham's history while showcasing the tools shaping our ever-changing world. This government acknowledged the importance of supporting organizations like the museum, which enrich the lives of Ontarians. They have recently secured senior community grants to craft tailored pottery programs for our seniors. Speaker, I am immensely grateful for the positive impact these organizations have on Markham Unionville. Their dedication strengthens our community, and I am glad about our government's support to them and extend a heartfelt thanks for their invaluable work. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, October is Islamic Heritage Month here in Ontario, and that was made possible by the member from London, Fanshawe, who graciously invited members from other parties to sign on to her bill, and it was unanimously passed in this legislature. And what it's done, it's created a time for Muslims across Ontario. So that so they can celebrate and share their history and culture with all Ontarians. The five pillars of Islam are Shada, faith, Salah, prayer, Sakat, almsgiving, Psalm, fasting, and the Hajj, pilgrimage. Now, I, my first three elections, the holy month of Ramadan fell. And so I've been to a lot of iftars and a lot of breaking of fasts. And what it taught me, what I learned was the openness and a welcoming of Muslim communities in my riding, and it's not just in my riding, it's across Ontario. So I'd like to say in particular a word of thanks to these communities in my riding. The AMA community, or the Mosque of Mercy, uh, the Asalam Mosque, the Ali Masjid Mosque, and also the Ismaili Community Centre on Conroy Road. Thank you for all that you've done to build community in Ottawa South by opening your doors and welcoming people and supporting us during COVID and many other things that have come along. And I'm looking forward this weekend to celebrating Muslim women in arts and sciences uh, this Sunday afternoon at the AMA Mosque. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to take this opportunity to talk about the incredible automotive investments that are coming into the province of Ontario. I had the opportunity last week to talk about the man with the yellow tie who is bringing hope to all of these places right across Ontario, from my area in Essex County all the way up to uh, St. Thomas, all the way up to Oshawa jobs being created by the multi-billion dollar investments being brought to Ontario due to the incredible policies put forward by this government and the leadership of our Premier. When I say billions, I'm not talking about four or five billion, I'm talking about $27 billion to date. And that's just the primary investments. Everybody knows that when the automotive industry gets geared up, there are suppliers, secondary suppliers, tertiary suppliers, and then suppliers to the suppliers. It is an incredible supply chain. And here in the province of Ontario, we are the locus and the center and the nuclei of a burgeoning electric vehicle industry that is going to move us into the economy of the future. I want to once again take this opportunity to thank the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade for the fantastic investments being made in the province of Ontario. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes Broad. 
you, Mr. Speaker. The documentary The Movie Man made its way to its home in Kimmount at the Highland Cinema this fall. The premiere of the movie was hosted by what is arguably the most unusual movie theatre in North America, perhaps the world. For 40 years, the Highland Cinema has been a landmark entertaining locals, tourists, campgoers, prime ministers, rock stars, and movie stars themselves. With five screens and over 550 seats, the theatre can host its entire town and more. This would not have been possible without Kinmount's own Keith Stata, the movie man himself. When movies premiere in the big city, they also premiere at the Highland Cinema. Yes, even Barbie and Oppenheimer debuted there. As movie theaters closed in North America, Keith collected relics of cinematic history, imagery, and pop culture, creating a museum of movie memorabilia that is a must visit. The director of the film, Matt Finlan, was inspired by Keith when he could come to the theatre in Kinmount as a young boy. The resulting work captured the whimsical uniqueness of the theatre and the thrilling experience of going to the movies. As The Movie Man makes its debut this spring, be sure to see it at the Highland Cinema in Kinmount for the best movie museum experience and, of course, the best popcorn you'll ever eat. Woo! See you at the movies. Thank you. That concludes our members' statements before this morning. And before I introduce the guests in the Speaker's Gallery, I have a couple of announcements. I beg to inform the House that, pursuant to Standing Order 9G, the Clerk has received written notice from the Government House Leader indicating that a temporary change in the weekly meeting schedule of the House is required. And therefore, the afternoon routine on Wednesday, October 25, 2023, shall commence at 1 p.m. I also beg to inform the House that there are now 15 members sitting as independents. However, given the order of the House dated October 23, 2023, the member for Hamilton Centre is not currently eligible to be recognized by the Speaker in debate. Therefore, there will be no changes to the speaking allocations for independent members at this time. We have with us in the Speaker's Gallery.